Today is Wednesday, February 23rd, 2022. This is another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Your host, Alex, with another uh, short topic, just something that came to mind. As always, as topics and themes come up, I wanted to um, just, uh, just get a point across get an idea out there of uh, what it means to uh, to to spearhead an idea to spearhead an initiative to be the tip of the spear so to speak well um, a lot of that requires well it requires tenacity it requires persistence perseverance in the face of uh, in the face of challenge perseverance in the face of fear obviously fear is natural but uh for some people it it doesn't affect them like fear does to others and it's important to understand fear it's important to to know fear to know what fear is to know what fear does to the body in order to understand it in order to uh live with it, cope with it, work with it, interact with it, use it even. Fear can be implemented as a a tool and a weapon. I'm sure uh, folks have noticed what fear looks like in modern society and how it's been deployed, how it's been employed by certain regimes into getting the populace to do what they want, to do what the regime wants, and to getting people to follow a certain mode of conduct. The reason fear is important is because without it, there isn't really any growth. I feel like I believe that with discomfort comes the fear that you won't find comfort again. Comes the fear that discomfort will be persistent. And that's not an irrational fear to have. As humans, we're somewhat built for comfort the thing is that we are also built and bred to find and seek comfort to create it in other words (laughs) that means we're built to work that means that we're built to do legwork in order that we might be made comfortable in order that we might find comfort I mean you could retire now if you wanted right question is how comfortable would you be if you opted out right now if you chose to leave the game now how long could you last And what would you be doing? (laughs) To many, the game is never over. We never actually leave the game. Some folks just level up. Some folks have to uh, work a little less hard. But you still ought to work, none, you know, nonetheless. Regardless, you, you still ought to work. Work smarter, not harder. It's the goal of retirement, right? Supposedly have a little nest egg and invest portions of it so that you could obtain passive income. I mean, for many, that's ideal. And for some... It's not so much uh, the objective. 
I mean, for myself, it's going to be a, a combination of having investments create income, but at the same time, reinvesting it actively. And my hope is that I'm able to do that until I drop. Why? Because I'm, com- I'm comfortable working. I'm, I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. And that's something I picked up in law school even. When you go in your first year, you get a whole new world. It's cracked open on you like an egg. You you literally get egg on your face. It's a humbling experience. Very humbling experience to many who come in from undergrad or from outside. Some have experience and some don't. I mean, life experience, right? So if you had gone from like kindergarten to JD and know nothing else besides school, besides academic curriculum, academic curricula, law school is going to hit you like a fucking freight train if you don't have the right structure, if you don't have the right... uh, the term I'm looking for. Yeah, I I think it's the right frame of mind. If you don't go into it with the right frame of mind. Because it cracks open this thing called the law and it turns up the heat on you. You become the frying pan. You become the chef. You become the fire. You become one with the kitchen. You have to get into the kitchen and handle that heat. So if you already have experience of that kind on the outside, working with heat, working well under pressure, essentially chefing up, managing people, managing an organization, And you know how to prioritize, or you have an idea of how to organize and prioritize. That'll go a long way. That'll go a long way. And it ain't even that hard to think outside of the fucking box, man. You wanna be, you wanna be a spearhead? You want to spearhead your own initiative? Step one, step one. Don't tell anybody too soon about your initiative. I mean, you you want to uh, create something, you want to do something worthwhile, you want to innovate where you work, the process that they handle, you, you view it as inefficient, you want to make it better. Okay, write that down. Keep it to yourself. Because when you expose it to the light, when, not, not, not to the light. When you expose it to fuckery around you, it tends to get slapped down. It tends to become like what is surrounds it. If you don't have a stable network of individuals who will take your idea, who will consider your idea at face value and help you improve on it, help you build on it, and it doesn't have to be via uh, expending resources, physical resources on their part. You don't even need their money, right? Obviously, you want their money. I mean, that's going to come with time also and the social skills that you're able to develop. So if you can talk them out of, if you can talk them out of their money, if you can talk them into bankrolling your idea, well, then shit, you might just have yourself a business partner. Some associates you can count on. Otherwise, find yourself a, a circle, a network of individuals who, who are capable of considering alternative points of view and 
lending their advice, lending their perspective. Because that's ultimately what counts is the ability and, and you'll notice that with time as you develop your circle, it starts with one person or it starts with a small group, two or three people and from there you can build out. But with time, you'll recognize what social setting or social cues are more successful at inciting the reactions that you want when it comes to talking about something different, when it comes to talking about paradigmal changes, changes to people's paradigms. There are some people out there who are extremely, extremely uh, against. They're extremely uh, adverse to paradigmal change because it implies that the status quo as they know it will will cease to exist. At least that's the implication that that is born inside of their psyche because I mean of how they've been conditioned, how they've been socialized, the heuristics that they employ, the the mental shortcuts and if you tell them that, well, you know, there is a shortcut that shortcuts two or three or five shortcuts in their own mind, they'll, they'll think you're fucking crazy because they've done it one way for who knows how long that they can't conceive of doing things better. Why? Because to them, doing something different doesn't equal better all the time. To them, doing something different just means, oh, doing more work, having to learn more, having to to do something in addition to what they do now, when they can easily just discard what they do now and pick up something better and upgrade their life. Update, there you go, update their software. But, you know. Some people are just really uh, against that idea. Are really, really, uh, what you call stubborn? Is it stubborn to the notion of improvement, self improvement, self development? To them, it's about stability, how stable they can get, how comfortable they can become, and not need to go out and seek something better and I I don't mean more like more material things in life though sometimes you have to attain a certain level attain a certain level of materiality in order to establish comfort but that isn't always a requirement for some comfort becomes stagnation or stagnation becomes comfort to them. And the way that their life operates revolves around the least amount of effort they have to expend in improving the world around them in order that they might be comfortable doing less. It's a hard concept to grasp if you're about self-improvement it's difficult to grasp and and I'm not gonna parade myself out here and say that I haven't been stuck in a situation called comfort why because again we're human living through the human condition surviving it and at times thriving in it and then other times We succumb to lethargy. We become comfortable with a way of life. And typically that's where the complaints start. Typically that's where the pains start. Not so much uh, growing pains, if you will, 
but actually, actually bed sores, really, <laughs> from not moving. <laughs> <laughs> from not moving You get fucking bed sores from not moving Nobody Nobody's gonna step into your fucking mind And turn you over for you Right Because it's it's The, the mind The psyche isn't something that We could just step into and, and make tangible Just yet I mean words Words are a, a very close Approximation A very A very big step, a large step towards motivating people, towards creating change in somebody's mind, changing somebody's mind, effectively changing somebody's mind. But until then, the learning part and the understanding part, they come from within, they come from inside, they come from inside of one's own mind. I mean, yeah, they might be planted by ideas. That's why teachers exist. That's why educators exist. But if you aren't actively working on developing yourself, it's no use having an educator around you that wants to show you. For what? To squander an opportunity? An opportunity to learn? Nobody's going to forcefully turn you over in your fucking comfort zone when they see you don't want to change. It's a habit. Stunting is a habit. Learning is a habit. Becoming a better person is habitual. I mean, it might get to the point of addiction for some. Being better than everybody else. I mean, that's very much ego-driven. But for the common individual who lives life day to day, week to week, month to month, trying to have a career, trying to establish themselves, trying to set themselves up for success. It's a habit that must be developed in order to have success manifest itself. That comes through consistent work. It comes with consistency. Identifying your best interests in relation to everyone else's and prioritizing the better ones. Not the best ones, the better ones. Something that you're capable of handling without... Reaching outside of your depth of knowledge or outside of your understanding. I mean, you do want to reach, right? But not something where you're completely out of your depth. You still want to keep learning. And the hope is the hope, the mission. The mission is that in time, as you learn, you are able to educate others. And you'll be able to do so simultaneously, concurrently. As you learn, so you shall teach. Why? Because we learn from interaction. We learn from socialization. We are most like who we most, we are most who we closely associate with. And obviously you want to associate yourself with others in the path to learning. Others who are capable of educating. Individuals with 
similar, if not slightly better, capabilities to speak. Social skills. Who are able to take information and package it into words. Package it into discourse, discussion, and debate. And do it professionally, just for the love of the game. Some say the game is meant to be sold. And while at times I believe it's true, especially in the line of work that we're in, it's also imperative that people understand that not all game is worth selling, just like not all game is worth buying. And those who are generous with their time and their energy for the right reasons and not just wasting it are the ones who tend to get ahead, are the ones who've got thick networks, people they can count on more than one hand and that they can rely on. When push comes to shove, or when uh, good goes bad and vice versa. I mean, to be the tip of the spear, you've got to be sharp, right? But that comes with risk. Having to test your metal against uh, other materials out there. (laughs) that comes with trial and error but the more you try the more you learn the better you become the better professional you become and the easier it gets to navigate and initiate others into your own network It doesn't take a whole lot of sacrifice. It doesn't take a whole lot of investment at this point. Where in the beginning, it might have taken a lot of both. Maybe. And now, it's what you can create with your words. And have others understand what you're doing, what you need, where you're headed to, and how they can be part of it. Have a great Wednesday. Catch you on the next one.